So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Easy Conversations. Thanks a lot to everyone who listened to the last episode featuring the homie Matt and I. Hope you enjoyed listening to us give our uh, breakdown of the House of the Dragon mid uh, full season recap and then looking ahead at the uh, future Game of Thrones shows. So now for episode 141 of Easy Conversations. I'm extremely excited, of course, to be back in the studio virtually with the homie Matt. So it's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a great time right now, enjoying summer. We have a re- really cool episode for you guys today. Um, Eric, why don't you, without further ado, why don't you tell everyone what we're going to be discussing on this episode? Yeah, so for this one, we're going to be going over the sci-fi genre in general, mostly focusing on movies. I think maybe we'll sprinkle in some TV shows here and there if it comes up organically, but we're thinking of just really giving a breakdown of that genre in general, share our top five sci-fi movies list. Um, and yeah, then get into some Alien Romulus, the latest entry in the Alien franchise, talk about that movie, give our full spoiler, f- full uh, uh, breakdowns of that movie. So if you haven't seen it, maybe just fast forward. I'll have some timestamps in the video so you can just stick along for the good vibes. And then when we get to the movie, if you haven't seen it, you can skip ahead to some random wrecks. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, sci-fi genre, there's so much to that we can get into here. Um, you can just share our thoughts on it, like if we're fans or not. Matt, I mean, obviously we're devoting an entire podcast to it, so that should tip our hats that we're kind of interested in it. But Matt, what do you, for you, what's the big draw of the sci-fi genre? Like, where does it rank in terms of like movies for you? Are you a fan? Let's let's get into it. So the sci-fi genre for me, like. I, I love the sci-fi genre. I'm just going to say that off the top. It caters to the like, big action and epic movies, big spectacles. Um, within this sci-fi genre, there's different categories, like an action, more action-based movie, drama, comedy. Like sci-fi is, it, it encompasses many things, right? So you get different variety of sci-fi, which I love. And like I said, a lot of the big budget movies that i love that we all know and love are sci-fi because it allows you you know sci-fi genre the re- what appeals to me it allows the possibilities are endless basically you know you have you have stuff that doesn't exist right now but you can through the medium of film it's portrayed you can see like space space exploration empires you know the whole all the different universes star wars star trek Tonight, we're not going to super focus on, like, Star Wars or any big universe tonight because, like, we've done that on other pods. But, like, just in general, the movies have a fantastical and, like, magical setting and stuff that doesn't exist right now. And we get to witness it on film. So that's really exciting. Um, Sci-fi, I think it's what caught my eye, too, when I was younger, Eric. I don't know about you, but, like, the Star Wars movies, like, movies like Jurassic Park, which is technically sci-fi, I mean... Yeah, and like stuff like that, the fantastical that captivates you. Sci-fi captures you at an early age. Um, I'm also thinking of like movies like the Terminator franchise, the Alien franchise, which we're going to be discussing the latest entry later on. Um, all caught my eye at a young age because it's just it allows you to do things that aren't realistic, and we kind of kind of like seeing that when I'm watching my movies. Um, but yeah, I, I, I digress. I'm spewing for a long time now, Eric. What what are your what are your general thoughts on sci-fi? Yeah, like we love a good coming of age movie as much as the next person, but there's so only so much that it can give you that we haven't seen before. Whereas sci-fi, like like you said, the possibilities are endless. There's um I I like to think of myself as a creative person. I've I've written a lot of stories in my day, but never have I been able to fully flesh out like a world that's completely foreign to anyone on planet Earth the way that some of these people do with their movies books tv shows what have you it's so impressive and whenever we get into those like it's such a like you said spectacle it's like it's what we want out of cinema is to enter a whole new Mm -hmm. world shout out aladdin and then you can just fully lose yourself for the next hour and a half to two and a half hours um four hours if we're talking avatar but there's just so much to love and like the depth of it all in these franchises that they expand upon is so cool and um yeah it's like the perfect it's the it's the true escapism in cinema like there is a part yeah. of us that like to see stuff that we can relate to in in movies like in real world that goes into cinema but if you can have those elements and then sprinkle in 
a whole new galaxy on top of that. That's like, how can you even top that? So you're right, me too. When I think back of like live action movies that I was introduced to, it's Star Wars. I don't really have another example, like maybe Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, those kind of movies, which again, sci-fi right there and a different kind of sci-fi. It's just like this taking science and breaking molecules down to a smaller level. Like that's not real. And again, it's something that's flubber. Like just, I'm just thinking off the yeah. top here, movies like that, like those are the ones that really, I guess, stick with you as a flubber on any substance would surface would it's those are the ones that like, that stand out um no disrespect to all the other great comedies like great outdoors and stuff but um anyways yeah. so sci-fi is just a peak different and original ideas on the screen never get tired of it there was like um i guess um a plethora of them dropped in like the mid 2010s. I want to say interstellar kind of kicked off like every year we're getting one to two deep space movies with big names like George Clooney, um, Sandra Bullock, Ryan Reynolds, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, like all the A-listers wanted to get up, yeah. get into outer space because like they're probably just like us children of the corn seeing crazy things in space <laughs> that they want to participate into. So they, I think we got wow. kind of oversaturated there though. I didn't even see half of those movies, but some of them are truly great. So when you look at those, like those space movies that are maybe a bit more realistic than like a star Wars, for example, do you prefer when they lean into the crazy fantastical or when it's truly grounded in reality, like a, a 2001 space odyssey, for example, that's like, that's cited as a very realistic space movie. Like, do you prefer to see like aliens pop up or what's more like factual based? If you had to choose. That's an excellent question, Eric. It was actually where I was going to like lead off next with uh i was gonna ask you a some very similar question so now we're gonna answer it all here i can't i can't glance by though the flubber and children of the corn <laughs> references that is probably the first time in the history of airways where those two movies have been mentioned in the same like paragraph that was crazy and that flubber pun no, that was I a long know if that paragraph was intended or not, but that was great that was great um okay I was going to ask you, like, because I, I wrote down a list of more realistic sci-fi movies where it could take place in a future 20 to 30 years from now. And then there's the ones, like you said, the fantastical, the aliens, the uh, the ones where it's a little more far-fetched, like where there's a fantastical element. Honestly, Eric, I prefer the ones that are more realistic, like 2001 A Space Odyssey, mm -hmm. movies that technically could happen. Now, not everything in 2001 could happen. There's some magical shit in there, but, like, Realistic movies I'm thinking of, Eric, I wrote them down. Like movies like Minority Report, mm. um, Sunshine, Gattaca, The Cell. Now, I, I don't know if you're, or uh, even Moon with Sam Rockwell. I don't know if you're familiar with all of those, but they're all like taking place in a near future where technology allows them to do different things. Technology that has yet to exist in our time, but honestly, people are working on it, like AI and, mm. you know, cameras everywhere like minority report i don't know if you're familiar with that like they're trying to stop crime before it happens using like crazy retinal id scanners and predicting people's movements through algorithms and computers like it's it's really crazy how like that could happen one day so i like that genre of sci-fi a lot the more like oh this could happen one day you know even blade runner 2049 and the original blade runner like yeah, that's that's like uh, you, in the movie it says it's right now, but I mean they didn't know what was gonna happen back then when they predicted right now. But that could happen down the road, you know, flying cars and all that stuff. That's the sci-fi I like, Eric. I prefer. Um, I like deep space, realistic deep space movies where they have a mission to do something. Like, for example, the movie Sunshine, the Danny Boyle movie Sunshine, where they want to launch a nuclear bomb to reignite the sun because it's dying. Mm. So this is a movie starring Killian Murphy, Chris Evans, a great, great little space movie. I love space journey movies like that, where there's an objective, you know, even Alien, too. I love, like, the exploration aspect. That would be my, honestly, my favorite subgenre of sci-fi would be, like, in space, there's a mission, something goes wrong. 
you know, a little bit of throw, a little bit of horror in there and suspense. And that's, that's perfect for me. Um, do you prefer Eric, the more realistic sci-fi or the fantastical sci-fi? I guess I got to go with the fantastic sci-fi to be honest, just because like that formula maybe runs dry for me after a while. Where in like, if you can kind of see what's coming in the sense of like the crew is assembled you, there's a bit of tension between a few crew members and um, one is maybe reckless in like the, how they follow the procedures and stuff. It leads to like a leak in the, anyway, the protocol <laughs> is broken. Then something happens that divides the crew and literally members die as you go through it. And then, then at the end, something like a creature of some sort comes along, which I guess would not be realistic at all, but I still like those movies. Don't get me wrong, but I got to go fantastical just yeah. because of the different, like those movies are typically confined. I like Fantastical because it expands yeah. like a bunch of different worlds. Again, drawing back to Star Wars, like we're traveling to at mm. least three, four planets per movie, right? Like I like that kind of movement. Yeah. And um, those other movies typically tend to stay in one place. Like Interstellar is an interesting one where it technically mm. is kind of realistic when they talk about the the formulas and the theories that they follow, but they do travel across. Yeah time and space literally to different planets and um there there's i don't know i don't really understand all of the uh, the theory behind it there obviously but that's kind of an in-betweener that i like a lot but then when i look at like the alien movies if we're just talking about space like i love them fighting the, the xenomorphs and like, obviously we'll get into <laughs> that more later but I like that. But again, what's kind of the scariest sci-fi is the one that's kind of mo the most realistic in that the AI you talked about. Like in, so I just watched 2001 Space Odyssey for the first time in full this week. Amazing movie, honestly. I loved it. I thought I, I had a hard time watching it the first time, but I sat through it the whole time this time. Great movie. And that movie, you can tell like every single sci-fi movie drew inspiration from. And the AI piece of like, how kind of going rogue like that's a trope we've seen time and time again of like the robot like alexa for example or siri going yeah. like doing its own thing that it comes from there like it's 2001 space odyssey is the founding father so and and I, i'm a huge anti-ai guy like anytime ai comes up in conversation at work i always let it be known that <laughs> I'm a, I'm a huge like for human rights and just like I don't want AI to take away human jobs like um, AI right. cannot write a movie as well as a, a human can like I'll die on that hill and even the art that it can put together like it doesn't have there's no passion no story there it's just like oh it might be beautiful there like the, it's crazy what AI is putting together these days but I'm just not about it so that's kind of my rant on AI the true villain of it all but yeah so if i gotta wrap it up it's <laughs> fantasy sci-fi is my go-to genre but i i do like the realistic too um not against it great answer i mean if i'm being truthful star wars is my favorite franchise of all time i don't know if i've been on the record in yeah, saying same. that like said that before but star wars is my ultimate favorite so Same's oh, i would play star wars any over any other like sci-fi anything but if i'm looking at like the library of movies that are sci-fi realistic and sci-fi fan fantastical i like the more realism one uh, mm -hmm. because of what i just explained but yeah star wars is king that's all i wanted to say there yep um also what, what sci-fi another aspect of sci-fi i love is stuff with time you know time travel stuff i'm, I'm talking like back to the future uh even Groundhog Day, I don't even know if you'd call that sci-fi, but oh, we'll use uh, Edge of Tomorrow more of as uh, more as a realistic example. Edge of Tomorrow, Looper, stuff with going back in time and redoing things. I love that stuff, Eric. Love it um, because it allows you to just be more creative with telling a story and being more original. Movies is your avenue to do that, right? You don't have to make like super realistic dramas all the time. You can do something crazy that we've never seen before which is um, so many great directors i've done and that's what i love about the genre the whole like stories based with like time looping or time travel i'm a big fan of those now run it, lola run it, over the years the run lola run the, the doing the groundhog day movies there's been a lot of groundhog day movies recently 
in like the last 10 years, Eric, and I'm in, co- in comedies, horror, and honestly, it's getting a little tiresome. Like, I've seen it like 10 times now, it's enough. Yeah. Um, but like, when it's like done like Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise, I was super entertaining. And what are your quick thoughts on this time, like a Groundhog Day movie or time travel movies? Yeah, I like them. Like, like you said, after you see one, you've seen 20. Or it's like it, they're, they do find different ways of like making it change a bit and like have the twist like with edge of tomorrow it's um i forget what exactly what the twist was there but it made sense how he yeah yeah anyways not gonna try to explain that movie but like palm springs is another one that i, yeah. I watched recently that was a great movie too i, I don't mind a, a repeat though like the um, kind of uh coming back on the same events with a different twist like the character now has new awareness new knowledge so you know normally it's going to lead to either... There's going to be some comedy in that. Like, that's a guarantee. Where just people reacting to yeah. a character who knows way more. Like, that's a classic trope you'll see, though. He's like, I know what you're going to say. Like, the, in Edge of Tomorrow, I think that happens. Like, Tom Cruise literally says word for word what characters are going to say because he's seen it so many times. Or it's like the classic, like, this isn't the first time we're having this conversation, right? Like, yeah, you got me. Like, yeah. that's a classic. <laughs> you're going to hear that line in every single Groundhog Day movie. But it, you know what? It always plays, though. Who am I kidding? Um, because those are also movies that you're not really watching, like, back-to-back anyways. You're going to see those, like, every few years. Like, uh, maybe, like, Palm Springs, when I saw it, I had no idea that that was the concept. So I had no problem with it being, like, a Groundhog Day thing. And went into it fresh. Yeah. And it's like, hey, this is cool. So, yeah, overall, I guess I like them. I've never actually seen Groundhog Day in full. Kind of like uh, E.T., which was a movie I also got to watch this week. Knock that off the old bucket list. But um, it's like just seen in fragments, so it's um, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that. I don't mind it. Awesome, um, yeah. I I saw you were watching a lot of sci-fi this week, and it was making me smile. Like reading oh. your reviews, and you're glad you dug most of these movies, if not all of them. Um, I know I had to mix in a stinker I'm- in there. The second old <laughs> beneath the Planet of the Apes. I'm glad I, I had a one star in there. To be honest, like it, it kind of made made it seem as though I was not only just giving these movies great reviews because they're oldies. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I stayed away from any Planet of the Apes sequel. I've only ever seen the original mm-hmm. and the 2001 remake, and then mm-hmm. the new like quadrilogy so far. Yeah. Um, the next question. I had for you was another thing sci-fi does a lot like i watching movies throughout like the 40s 50s 60s every decade of cinema basically you know you have your war movies a lot of world war ii movies back in the day they they made a lot of world war ii movies now you're seeing less of that stuff now you're seeing more i find military and action movies using the future as a new way of telling a story because We've seen the movies about the war in the Middle East. We've seen the World War II Vietnam movies. Now I find there's this trend with let's, like, fight aliens. Who are the new bad guys? Aliens, stuff from outer space. You know, like Independence Day basically kick-started all that. Mm-hmm. Or, well, I mean, there are movies before, but that one made it popular. And do, do you like all these new military sci-fi movies, Eric? Well, we'll call them action movies. I'm um, thinking of movies like Chris Pratt, The Tomorrow War, or... Um, like edge of tomorrow like do you like seeing military combat and then in outer space or on earth but with aliens are you a fan of like that over the top sci-fi action so those i would not say those are movies i actively seek out like all those chris pratt movies i actually heard they're half decent like better than they might have looked but i don't like those aren't necessarily ones i'll like i'll see a trailer from like i gotta see this one if anything i'm kind of skeptical of them i think that might maybe there's some trauma from having seen cowboys and aliens in theaters back in what was it 2011 what a stinker that was but yeah no it's not really one that i'll be like itching to go see i can't but what's nice about it is that you're like you said it's an original concept in that we're not just pitting humanity against humanity it's like now we're kind of coming together collectively to fight off a bigger threat from outer space that we're not familiar with and we're seeing as a, a unit that could lead to the extinction of humankind. I'm actually reading right now Three Body Problem. I had mentioned it a few pods ago, kind of stopped reading it, but now I'm back into it. And it's exactly that. It's a society from outer space coming to Earth, but they actually got called to Earth by humans who 
do not want to live like they see no future for humanity so they're like you know what we're gonna we made contact with this society outside of our realm let's bring them in work together wipe out civilization so we'll see how that works out we'll keep you posted but it can be cool it's just like what's the design of the aliens what are they looking like like that's kind of the big thing is like are the aliens cool is the action solid if it is like me i'll go off reviews like if it's well rated or it looks good then i'll go see it but otherwise like it's not like i gotta see these these um alien warfare movies struggling to think with the last one like that that i saw other than to edge of tomorrow like recently i don't know you and uh, the reason you're uh, you hit the nail on the head there Eric. the reason you're struggling is because i i'm thinking a lot of those movies are not very memorable or good yeah and that's where i was gonna keep going and saying sci-fi for all the great movies there's a lot of forgettable ones where they'll sl- they'll have a generic movie then they'll slap on a sci-fi moniker out of sci-fi element to try to spice things up but at the end of the day a bad story is a bad story bad scripts a bad script weak acting is weak acting like so there's a lot of sci-fi for lack of a better word garbage out there and there's a ton of shitty like disaster movies that are sci-fi right eric like meteor hitting earth the moon's coming too close or something there's always Mm -hmm. a peril all that kick started with like movies like armageddon and deep impact in the early 2000s late 90s you know all those disaster movies from outer yeah. space or sci-fi those are those are kind of fun i kind of like those ones they're cheesy but like then they went they knocked they killed it after like they knocked it over that they beat it to to a pulp with a hammer so um i'm and i think you'd agree i'm more interested in the sci-fi of like um like alex garland you know ex mock and annihilation more like it gives you critical thinking food for thought you discuss the movie after like ex mock and i've seen four or five times mm-hmm. i'll keep watching that movie it poses a lot of interesting questions Great movie. ai that's about ai right so yeah that's my favorite sci-fi movies are movies like that ex mock and uh annihilation i mean we we're gonna do a top five soon and you'll see like where you'll see where my general you'll see that represented in my top five so um yeah like the the more serious man sci-fi movie i don't want to sound pretentious when i say that but like the the ones that have more under the surface you can peel back the layers and discuss it Mm -hmm. um yeah what are you i mean i'm guessing you love those movies too eric i do i haven't seen annihilation but obviously ex machina big fan of if you'll recall i mentioned that in our hidden gems podcast with curtis and basam episode 48 i believe check that one out Mm -hmm. if you haven't seen that but in the movie ex machina a good movie too great pod though and um yeah the thinkers are i'll take a thinker over a natural disaster Dwayne the rock johnson lead movie all day but you know those have their appeal you throw those on when a uh, substitute teachers in um, class wheel the tv out and then you're good to go but yeah I, I'm kind of good to just dive into our top five list, to be honest. Like, I don't have too much more to say on, like, the genre in general. Other than, like, the importance Let's of, like, how important it is to set the stage, build up your world, make it understandable. Like, that's for books anyways. That's the hardest thing about sci-fi is, like, they got ex- like they're throwing all these new made-up words your way. You have no idea what you're reading. Like, three-body problem. It took me, like, 150 pages to understand what's going on. Now I'm getting it. I'm almost at the end of the book. But with a movie, like that's how important it is. Like you, you don't have as much time as you do in a book. You, you got to just present it simply and like not make it too complex. So yeah, uh, movies we can do okay. <laughs> yeah, hold on. If you were watching on YouTube, there, there's a bit of a delay in the picture that came up. Are you going to put, like, the movies in the boxes, like, below or... Yeah, exactly. On the screen? Nice. All right, there we go. All right, so um, do you want to kick us off your number five? We'll just go back sure. and forth, five, five, four, four, three, three, onward. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think our list will be very similar, actually. Well, I don't know. I, I had so much... To, I had a hard time making this list. I wrote, like, oh, 20 yeah. movies down, had to narrow it to five. Anyways, without further ado, at number five... My dad made me rent this when I was super young when we went to Blockbuster. He's like, you got to watch this movie. And I fell in love with it. Is it like the best in the franchise? I don't even know. Is it a fast-paced movie? Is it, is it, does it still hold up? I'm not even sure, but I watch this movie constantly, and I love it. And it's that's the Terminator, the first Terminator movie. Um, I think this is the best Terminator movie because 
Arnold is the bad guy in this. He's the most menacing villain ever in this movie. His lines are iconic. The movie's awesome, in my opinion. James Cameron made a masterpiece, created a whole franchise after. Um, just super suspenseful and a bit of action in there and just a solid movie, in my opinion. The Terminator, I love it. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed. I haven't seen this, to be honest. I was debating, because it's not on streaming anywhere. I was debating just going for it and watching Terminator 2. Just screw it. To, just to throw another one in my mix there. But I feel like that wouldn't be right. So I want to find a way to watch the OG Terminator. and Because, um, yeah, I've been going through all these classics. And that's probably the biggest blind spot right now. T1 and T2, but uh, right on. Love that pick, but uh, again, I can't say too much on it. I haven't even seen the movie. It's a damn shame. Um, so number five for me, again, making the list very hard. Um, if we were having Star Wars movies in here, it'd probably be all Star Wars, to be honest, but uh, we steered clear. I also just went one movie from each franchise, so I, I wouldn't take my list with like, a, with, like hard code, like, these are my five favorite sci-fi movies of all time in this order. It's you, you might be like, shocked at where some of these movies landed for me. But anyway, so number five for me, just rewatch for the second time, I believe. Alien, OG, amazing movie. Love everything about it in that the pacing of it all. We're introduced to the crew. There's like, we're not really, we're finding out stuff as we're going along, right? Like, why are we moving through space? Like what's going on? Why are they waking up from their cryo sleep? Everything seems fine. But as we go along, there's just more underneath the surface and then devolves into a full blown horror movie. Bilbo Baggins, absolute scumbag in the whole movie. Um, but yeah. huge fan of like all the acting, the, the alien itself, the face hugger, the world built, it gets just unreal. Sigourney Weaver, killer in this movie. This is one that I'm going to rewatch more often now. And um, classic movie. I think it looks phenomenal too. Like, I'm watching this thinking this is made in the 70s. It looks better than 95% of the sci-fi movies that come out in the 2020s even. Like it's, it's insane. What a movie. I couldn't agree more, Eric. Mackenzie and I just watched it, her for the first time. We watched it last weekend. We, I think it was on Netflix or Disney Plus or something. It looked beautiful. The movie, the quality was spectacular. I think it's a perfect movie. Like, I, all the specs, 10 out of 10. Um, I like the, like, the slow paceness of it, you know? Mm. Like, it's it's not super in your face right away. You ease into it, then it goes all the, like, then it's very satisfying in the, in the climax. Yeah. But, yeah, I love that movie, too. Um, number four for me, this might be come as a surprise because I don't really talk about this franchise or this movie a lot, but I, I think that the first one is a masterpiece in my opinion, and that's The Matrix. Mm, I nice. love The Matrix. I, just, I remember watching it when it came out. I was super young, didn't understand anything, but, but I re kept rewatching it over the years. I think it's a super smart premise of the robots taking over, then like putting all in a simulation called The Matrix, and that's how we live our lives, and we don't know anything, we don't know any better. There's even a line in the movie where the character's like, I want to I like, I want to be in the simulation, you know, like if, if it tastes like steak and it feels like steak, then that's good enough for me. <laughs> that's a line in the movie where, where the bad guy anyways, um, super, super cool action. Keanu Reeves is super cool. Um, iconic lines, you know, is the CGI tiny, but dated maybe, but just, I love how it resolves itself to an end. And the, the first Matrix movie could be like a standalone movie. It'd be perfect. They kind of went balls to the wall with the sequels and they're not for me. But the first Matrix to me is a masterpiece. I, I love it. Nice. And talk about a movie that aged well, right? Like this was made, what, 99? And it's still like mm -hmm. the action scenes are phenomenal. Again, only seen it once. I watched it for the first time two, three years ago now. It was a well-documented thing on the pod where I'd never seen The Matrix and I got re like relentlessly clowned for it, so you can't really hit me with that anymore. But a uh, great movie. I, I strong recommend if you haven't seen it. Keanu, Unreal, um, Lawrence Fish, Killer, and um, Hugo Weaving, great villain as well. Yeah. The, the yeah. concepts in there are just awesome. It lo Like I said, looks great. Great movie. Only seen it once, though, so... 
it is not on my list as well. Um, next one. This is probably like every 90s, well, I guess not 90s baby there, but uh, I think most like people who have, <laughs> like they're just like the classic, like all oh, Pulp Fiction, best movie of all time, Wolf of Wall Street, mm-hmm. the best. Like I think Interstellar falls in that category of movie for people, but that is my number four. For sci-fi movies. I'm a huge fan of this movie. Honestly, McConaughey, unreal. Visually, very beautiful movie to look at. One of my favorite cameos in Matt Damon. Again, we're talking about scumbags and Bilbo Baggins. There's another one in the character that he plays. And it, again, the mu- like that's a soundtrack I actually listened to two days ago in the office. Just will always just get me in a in the zone to focus, get in the flow. If I'm painting something, I could throw that on. Dreaming of the Crash, great intro song. And again, like some thrilling sequences of like landing the ship. Even though they're not action, it's not an action-packed movie, far from it. It's really the suspense that it builds in the space travel and um, a lot of emotions like with uh, McConaughey watching Murph from the... Um, the bookcase and the fourth dimension stuff, black yeah. hole, the wormhole. It's um, a complex movie, but I think it makes sense the way they explain it all. I enjoy Interstellar a lot. You got, I think Jeffrey Wright's in there. Like uh, Nolan, Nolan killed it with this movie. So Interstellar number four for me. That's a fantastic pick, Eric. Um, I'm just going to quickly give my thoughts. Uh, just, it's a movie that was great when I saw it at the theater and then evolved into an even better movie the more times I watched it. Now it's a full-blown masterpiece. Maybe Nolan's best movie overall, like, for all the technical stuff and the emotion you feel after watching it. It's a, it's a true epic that's never been replicated. I think it's the top of its game for that, that type of movie. Um yeah, you said everything, Eric. I don't know what else to add mm. other than like I was super thrilled watching this movie in the theater and I still get the same goosebumps watching it in my living room. And the score is phenomenal. Yeah. I'm just going to highlight the the no time for caution piece, you know, when the thing's spinning and he has to like yeah. dock on the spinning station. That That's a beautiful score piece too. Classic on scene. Zimmer. So yeah, Interstellar, great pick. Uh, I said I said our list might be uh, different, but no, we do, definitely do have some similarities. My number three is actually Alien. Nice. So we already talked about Alien. So I, I just think like every character is memorable. Like the more times you watch Alien, you start loving all the little minor characters, like the engineer guys and uh, everybody. You know, uh, um, yeah. I don't know. We've already talked about Alien. We'll t- talk about it some more later on. So. Why don't you shoot us your number three, Eric? Yeah, number three. I actually flipped it with I had Interstellar as my number three. I just just flipped it now because this movie is one that I've seen way more times. I I didn't it definitely didn't grow up on this, but in a way I did because I was a massive growing up. Like you got, you quiz me on the name of any dinosaur in the world, I could name it to you. Mm. Jurassic Park number three. And this is a movie that I always look back at. I forget what, how old I was when I saw it for the first time, but it's always one that I, in my mind, was like, this is a scary movie. I was also afraid of everything as a kid, if you'll recall. <laughs> but I remember thinking of this, like, I can't handle watching this movie. I think I had seen the scene where Newman gets, like, spat on by that Velociraptor hybrid there. Um, in the jungle, like, there's, it's rain, it's a dark scene, like, that, I, me and darkness just didn't go hand in hand in movie scenes and stuff, so I feel like I saw that and thought, like, I can't watch this, but then when we finally sat down as a family to watch, I'm pretty sure I, I sat through the whole thing, no problem, now my parents could correct me and say I was hiding under the blankets a couple of times, I want to say, though, the scene where the T-Rex eats the guy in the washroom, that's probably one that my parents said, like, yeah, maybe close your eyes for this one. But again, you look at it back, like it's not a scary movie, really. Like there's no graphic violence. It's um it plays for kids, honestly, and Nick, it's I think aged super well. Has a lot of good comedy in there, which you know I love in a move any movie. And great characters. Yeah, I mean dinosaurs, tough to beat that. And it's obviously the best Jurassic movie, no questions asked. I kind of want to watch it now. My, you'll see on my letterbox soon, probably four and a half, five star rating coming up. So stay tuned. But um, classic movie. 
Oh, again, amazing right. soundtrack too. Like that theme song. Yeah. That's a song that was a specific request of mine for at our wedding. We had um, a cello and pianist play live music, and I asked that they play the theme to Jurassic Park when the guests arrived to the venue. And our cousin Julia actually did identify that song. She said it was unreal, and I could just, I hear the song in my head right now, and I, what a moment that must have been. I didn't hear it unfortunately. I was um somewhere else but i'm glad that i'm sure there are others who appreciate that moment but yeah what a what a soundtrack what a jam i couldn't agree more eric soundtrack might be one of the most iconic of all time john williams legendary master um this movie has so much heart the uh, the pacing is great like it's never a dull moment i, I recently rewatched it because mackenzie had never seen it before i'm like that's blasphemous we're watching it right now super thrilling i'll never not love that t-rex intro like in the rain when mm -hmm. the water the water cup and you first see him you know it makes the cgi and animatronics like it's it's perfect and it was made in freaking 93 31 years ago unreal unreal mm -hmm. movie not dated one bit it's gonna stand the, t the test of time it's freaking amazing like you said the characters are super memorable the dialogues amazing like quotable and to the point the the climax i love the like it's not super complicated at the end how it resolves itself but it's just a nice quick climax like perfect love it uh super original when it came out spawned a franchise thank, thanks for having it on the list eric it's not on my list i'm just gonna say that right away but like it, it, it could probably make my top 10. um my number two is one that you've already mentioned actually my number two is interstellar no way um nice. this had to be on my list in the top three for sure um sorry like i just said it's nolan's masterpiece um i don't know what else i I'll, I'll, I'll just add i love the stuff on earth in the movie seeing like how what humanity's got itself into like what's going on there and where they have to go to space and the whole mcconaughey fighting for like his kids and stuff in his farm like that's really touching stuff and then the yeah. stuff when like he ate super fat or his kids ate super fast and he time dilated so he's the same age and he talks mm -hmm. to uh, jessica chastain super soul crushing and sad like the movie's very emotional that's why i love it makes me feel emotion great thrill ride iconic sound like great score um yeah interstellar one but like everyone pr pretty much 99 percent of the people love this movie so I don't have to say no more on this. That's my number two. Great pick. I didn't think you would have it on your list, to be honest, because I do remember you saying, like, it wasn't Interstellar the first time you saw it. It wasn't what you were expecting it to be, but I guess with mm -hmm. more viewings, like, it's grown on you and, like, is a, a top one. So love to see that. And that's the beauty of these movies, too. Like, especially, that's what I guess separates good from great is that there's more to under the surface to pick up on and, like, the themes in there as well, the layers and that kind of segues nicely into my pick. So maybe surprising, but I've recently come in contact with this movie and it did leave an impression on me. Andre Tarkovsky's Stalker. Mm. Um, I'm just kidding. I've never seen that okay. movie. <laughs> then you, you're joking. <laughs> so, would have made one listener happy. But... In, in all seriousness, my pick is, I wasn't lying about it, it's recent, like this might be a crazy pick, but I'm throwing up Dune Part 2 as my number two sci-fi movie all time, because this movie blew me away in theaters, I went back to see it in IMAX, I watched it again on my phone, and I queued it up a fourth time not that long ago, and I paused, I'm like, alright, I don't want to over, I get really sick of this yeah. movie, but is impacted me big time in the theater and is only getting better it's making me appreciate dune one even more like i just love this world and how villeneuve brought it to life i've read the books the performances unreal the visuals out of this world like when i talked about how alien looks better than most movies coming out these days like dune 2 is not one of those movies i think that movie looks much better because obviously the different technology that is available in filmmaking nowadays and the, again it comes down to like the performances of chalamet uh, butler zendaya 
those are the uh, Ferguson like there's and then obviously supporting cast unreal but massive dune 2 guy don't be shocked when it's my number one movie of this year and um i can't like this is a movie i can't wait to own one day too like when we get dune 3 like i i'm gonna buy a box set of this trilogy like i i'm a massive dune guy and the influence that it's had on star wars now is is tough to ignore but i can separate the two and uh, appreciate one for what it is and one for what i've grown up with and i'm very glad to be in this world now and uh, again soundtrack unreal listen to it all the time would listen to harkonnen arena when i went to my hockey games yeah, it's um, just a jam so dune 2 number two all time like again that's what i'm saying like this could be moved around there but that's what i'm feeling right now dune part two hey a list, a list is only as good as like the last rewatches on these movies and these are this is all our opinions so i'm freaking so glad you have this movie on your list i thought maybe it'd make it but the only thing that would keep it off was like oh maybe he doesn't want to put a movie from this year um hell can you imagine if a movie comes out and takes away dune 2 as the number one spot for you that'd be crazy but uh, that's for another show um I, I i didn't consider this movie eric simply for because i've only seen it once so yeah. i need i need to hit the rewatch i think i'll like it even more because i like dune part one even more the second time i watched it mm -hmm. so we've done a whole pod on dune i'm not gonna yeah. regurgitate my thoughts on it so um my number one do you have a guess for my number one yeah, just quickly Eric? i was trying to think to be honest like i'm thinking i might be just blanking on something i don't know if you're a huge 2001 guy or blade runner like that's i'm thinking og blade Runner. actually let's go with that og blade runner is my guess that's a great guess, and that is indeed my uh, my number one, Let's Eric. OG go. Blade Runner. I had a feeling you might get this. Um, I freaking love this movie, guys. I've seen it more times than all the other movies on my list. Um, when I picked up the Blu-ray with all the different cuts, I watched it like two, three times in the same like week. Like I, I can watch this movie endlessly because it had such a great pace, cool characters, cool world soundtrack, the synth score, like. Everything going on in Blade Runner, I love. I love Harrison Ford in this movie. He's great. He's a legend. I love, like, the... the I like the bad guy, Rutger Hauer, Roy Batty. He's iconic. Great. There's some really cool shots in this. Everything. I'm gushing over this movie like Nez on Oppenheimer, but, like... <laughs> I, I truly love this movie, guys. I'm not going to go on and on about it because I'll talk about every little scene, but it's an iconic movie, a masterpiece. Blade Runner, Ridley Scott on my list twice for Ridley Scott now mm. with Alien and Blade Runner. But Blade Runner is my favorite, guys. Uh, everyone should check it out. The Nez references for Die Hard, Easy Conversations fans. If you know, you know. But a uh, great pick. Again, I think the last time you mentioned Blade Runner, I, I said I, I got to get on it. I still haven't, unfortunately. And I think one of those things that is that I'm going to have to watch Blade Runner and then rewatch 2049 because I did not love the movie when I saw it. Again, hadn't seen the OG. So, uh, two blind spots there. Like, Harrison Ford in his prime, right? Just getting every other role offered to him. So, right on. Love to hear that. I'm going to have to get on that, though. Do you have a guess for my number one? I was thinking about it quickly in my head. But I was like, I'm either blanking on something obvious or it's going to be something I wasn't expecting. Um... I don't remember if you liked Arrival. Maybe it's Arrival, honestly, Denny, if you know, because I forget your thoughts on that movie. Maybe you'll love it. Um, and you already have Denny Vinev as your number two spot, so it could be 2001, though, although you only recently watched it all from start to finish, so I don't think it's 2001. I'm going Arrival. Okay. So, yeah, I've seen Arrival twice. I think I okay. liked it a bit less the second time, to be honest. Like I remember I was blown away at the twist the first time. But then yeah. it, the second time, it was like I knew what was coming and I should have been able to like, appreciate the hints that they were dropping more. Maybe I'll rerun it a third time. So it's not Arrival. I, I think it's kind of a blind spot because when I say it, you'll be like, of course, this is one of your favorites. But mm -hmm. um, I'll just say it. I've talked about this movie and this franchise quite a few times on the pod. It's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. For oh, me. So fuck. obviously I'm a huge Caesar guy. Like... The more uh, I, I think about him, he's like one of my favorite characters in, in cinema. And Dawn is just, in my opinion, it's the best one of the remake trilogy. It's, 
you get your true conflict with Koba, who's again another dynamic character, amazing villain, great action. It it propels the war, obviously for the next movie in the series for the Planet of the Apes by creating that ape on ape conflict for the first time, and then like giving the ape, the humans the green light to like engage with the apes. Like, all right, we're going to battle with these these little fur balls and every quote and action that Caesar has is iconic in my opinion i'm not going to just keep repeating them i've done it in the past dawn is my favorite and now i will say while we're on the topic i rewatched the og planet of the apes movie amazing movie i think i wrote in my review like it might be the best one dawn is my favorite for sure but planet of the apes sake it's 1968 what a movie like it took a bit to, for me to get into it. I think like 25 or so minutes. But then when I was in, I was in. And the technology at the time was phenomenal. And I found it hilarious. They had good like flipping human expressions with apes. Like apes are the dominant, one, dominant species on the planet that they're on. Great dialogue. Characters are unreal. What a fumble in the second one. Anyways, like what a drop off from one to two. But all that to say, if you've never seen the original Planet of the Apes, strong recommend. Uh, great, great movie. I think, and I think I wrote in my review too, if I was alive in the 1960s and had nothing else to compare these movies to, like Planet of the Apes would be my favorite movie of all time. But obviously I've seen other movies that the technology's better and I've grown up with these new movies. Like, But that was such a good movie. I loved it. Um, I was debating giving it five stars for God's sakes. So... Yeah, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, though. Number one, always love watching that movie. I've seen it countless times. Uh, Gary Oldman, great villain. And the guy who plays Malcolm, the good human, I don't know his name, but he's in Oppenheimer, actually. He plays the, the prosecutor, I want to say. Yeah, Jason Clark. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Great, great yeah. character in there, too. Kerry Russell. Um, yeah, so, Dawn, that's it. But that's a great pick. I, I literally read your Planet of the Apes review. I should have known Don would be number one because you literally say that in your... Uh, imagine sitting in a theater in 1968 watching Planet of the Apes. It'd blow your socks off, and it did to a lot of people. If that movie, too, is eight, it's timeless. Like You can watch it now. I think it's a great movie, too, Eric. Oh, yeah. Um, and again, there's so many references from that movie in the new Planet of the Apes movies that I obviously had no idea because I'd never seen the OG. But like just specific settings of like in the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, there's literal scenes that are full of rips from the OG. Like them walking on the beach on a horse, the, um, the apes going through like the high grass, like the aerial angles where they're hiding from, the humans are hiding from the apes. Like that's a straight rip from Planet of the Apes original movie. Um, character names, like there's a, a girl called Nova in the original movie and Freya Allen's character in Kingdom is called Nova. So oh, homages, right? there's a Cornelius, B Bright Eyes I think is the name of the human. So a lot of homages and I love to see it. That's why like part of me wants to keep watching them even though I know they're not great. But I heard the third one's like the second best one of them all. So I might just watch that and stop, but... Huge fan of the apes in the, the, the original trilogy, too. Or five movies or whatever. Anyways. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, excellent list, Eric. I'm really... That's a great list. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. It's a sandwich for me. I've only seen the middle. Not not one and five, but... Love it. Um, Alright, so we can probably get into... Well, I guess quickly, but while it makes sense, the listener submissions, so we got a few for their favorite movies. Because there are some that we haven't touched on. So my mom submitted... She gave quite a few. Avatar, Dune, Back to the Future, and Jurassic Park. I almost included Avatar in my number five spot. I'm a, a big fan of Avatar. Like, I think that's a sci-fi as it gets. Like Fantastic, beautiful-looking world. Great adventure. It, tearjerker too and like I, I can't wait to see what these next movies do like looking forward to maybe doing a pod once the third one's out we can talk about that world and where it's at and then yeah so those are my thoughts there um you any comments on like back to the future i guess that's the one we haven't really touched on but that's a modern classic or an 80s classic i should say uh those are all great movies though all the ones she mentioned 
and big fan of all of them. Yep, great ones. Then um, the homie Dan Deshaun, he submitted Paul with, I believe, Seth Rogen, who plays the titular character. I haven't seen it. I know it's more of a comedy than a, the like the kind of sci-fi movies that we've just talked about there, but have you seen Paul, Matt? I have not. I know it's Simon Pegg and Nick Frost duo, so it's those two friends and uh, Seth Rogen as the alien. Never seen it, though. I can't comment. Yeah. Um, the next one is from the homie Mart Chevy's. So he said Interstellar, of course. So obviously came up on both our lists. Yeah. He's a huge Interstellar guy, um, of course. So great pick. Then Klesin Ud, she submitted Avatar as well. Great pick. Great pick. Then yeah. we got from the homie Ron Antoine. He submitted E.T., which, again, seen for the first time not too long ago. Loved it. I thought it was a great movie. Didn't cry as a lot of people would posit that I would, or they say it's quite emotional there, but I feel like it's one of those movies that if I saw as a kid, it would be one of my favorites as well. But again, lots of influence in, from E.T. and all these like Stranger Things and like other movies and yeah. shows like that. So I loved it. I love the vibe. Yeah, I, lo- I loved it as a kid and I love it now. So it's a, mass- it's a staple of cinema, really. Like everybody knows E.T. It's iconic. Yeah, the scene where he was deleting those coarse banquets were was hilarious. Like, I didn't see that coming, but that was a funny scene. And then where he synced up with the kid, I thought it was gold. And then my friend Melissa submitted Fifth Element, District 9, and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah. Never seen any of those movies, to be honest. Have you, Matt? I'm assuming you have, based on that reaction. Yeah, those are all good in their own little like subgenres. Fifth Element's just balls to the wall crazy world with bruce willis and then uh the second one i forget eternal sunshine of the spotless mind that one is really super realistic for a sci-fi movie to jim carrey and kate winslet like rom-com but super sad and depressing it's it's a i love that movie eternal sunshine i think it's great and district very nine. original what was the second movie? district nine district nine saw it at the theater and then rewatched it and loved it even more Really cool, like, allegory of how, like, humans are being treated, mm. treating other humans, but they use aliens in this movie. Really cool, really, really cool movie. Okay. All right, right on. So, yeah, those are the submissions from the people. So, thanks, everybody. Always love when you chime in with some picks. So, now we can get into some Romulus discourse. So, the latest mm-hmm. movie in the Alien franchise, the ninth movie, I believe, went to see it with Zach this weekend. And the whole time, I'm like, I was digging the vibe. I was a big fan of, like, the suspense, the new characters. I thought these are all unknown actors as far as I'm concerned. So I like how they took, like, all no names and threw them in here. It starts off, full spoilers, obviously. Starts off, like, on this planet. Then quickly they go into this ship where there's, like, an opportunity, like, cryo um, baskets or whatever that they can go into to travel across space to another planet. And then, of course, there are some aliens on the ship, face huggers. That's where it picked up for me is when the aliens were introduced and, like, activated, basically. I thought that scene looked phenomenal. Like, with the red lights. Like, I love the lighting in there, too. Like, Mm -hmm. eerie. The music was great. And for me, what was nice that I didn't know if any of these people were going to survive. So, everyone was kind of on the table. I wasn't sure if this was going to be an isolated movie or if they're going to keep following these characters, too. So, I don't know if we want to like, go through the movie like point by point there, but that's kind of what I liked off the top was the horror vibe and the uncertainty of it all. What about you? I agree with everything you've said, Eric. I had a blast watching this movie in the theater. What I liked is the director, Fede Alvarez, who previously helmed horror movies such as Don't Breathe and the Evil Dead remake, he brought, he brought Alien back to the horror realm, the suspense realm, and created insanely good atmosphere in this movie. Unlike Alien Covenant, Prometheus, Alien Resurrection, Alien 3, uh, AVP, AVP 2, you know, the last six, the last five movies or whatever, like those ones, to me, I like Alien Romulus. That's what I want to watch when I'm watching an Alien movie. So to me, it brought it back to the good stuff. And I was very pleasantly pre- pleased in the theater. I agree with you, Eric. The setup was a little 
not super fast paced, but it was so short that once it got going, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't care that the start was a little slower. Mm. Um, I like the unknown, the cast of unknowns, you know, I thought that was good. Just like alien one, one with Sigourney Weaver, not being a big star, but she ends up being the main person in the end. Um, like you said, the set design, the sound, uh, the lights, just like in alien one, it's all about the ship and like, the, the setting is a character in Alien, and it was a character in this Alien Romulus. Um, love that. Um, the Kaylee Spaney, who plays their main character, Rain, she was in Civil War this year, the movie oh, Civil okay. War. She was good in that movie, so she's kind of making a little breakthrough in my head. Like, okay, that's two movies this year that I really enjoyed, so is she going to be a big name one day? Maybe. Um, yeah, I was a fan, Eric. I was a fan. Um, did you like... Did you have any issues with, I'll give you one slight issue. Um, I do have subtitles only at home, like always. So like in the theater, oh. I was struggling hard with that cousin character Bjorn, like his British accent and even people talking too fast. I think I've, these, I, I think I've screwed myself up with subtitles and now at the theater, I'm struggling. Did you have that problem too? I'm glad you brought it up because I was literally <laughs> going to raise that immediately. Bjorn could not have told you that was his name first of all because whenever he was addressed like I don't like I wasn't here grasping that whatsoever kind of the same with a lot of these characters like K I was like was it Kate is it K like I don't know I'm not yeah. and then the other one like Bjorn his girlfriend no clue what her name was it was really when that guy Bjorn when he was talking I was I was capture grasping like maybe 30 percent of what he was saying Thankfully, his dialogue was pretty simple. He was, like, telling our poor uh, android Andy off. Like, I, I hated that dynamic, how much of an ass he was being to him. And then speaking of which, Andy, like, he was hard to understand as well because he was zipping through his dialogue at times. Huge yeah. fan of his character, though. Like, he was uh, one of my favorites alongside Rain. Like, they were my two favorites. Obviously, glad that they made it through alive. But, yeah, subtitles, definitely a complaint of mine as well. Um, I don't want to like just jump straight to another complaint because so I'll well um hype it up in the sense that like the practical effects unreal like the aliens all looked phenomenal, the face huggers like they're so creepy just like when they're trying to get through the ship without making any noise like when they raise the the ship's temperature there to match theirs and they're just silently yeah. creeping through like they're just like you know they're gonna hot pounce at one point that was great. Um. But yeah, I like the horror vibes too. I'm so I actually like Prometheus more than Romulus to be honest. But I'm okay. curious to see on rewatch which one I like more. I've seen Prometheus a few times though. But this so I guess I will go to my complaint. My thing was yeah. I wish they had done the end a bit differently in that ultimately the this movie well what I did like actually is that it gave us some information as to what they want with these aliens. Like, unless this is explained in other movies, for me it wasn't. Like, in watching 1 and 2, why do why do the androids, why are they interested in these aliens? Like, why does Ash want the alien to be born in Alien 1? It's because these creatures have properties that could lead to the creation of a better human race down the line. And, um... Like their healing properties, the regenerative, the um, aging and all that, their metabolism, all of that. Like that was cool. Like we got some good ex explanations there. Now, a few things there. Why do the androids care that much? Like they're freaking androids for God's sakes. If anything, it should be the humans. Unless the androids are really just following human direction. Like I guess that could maybe answer my own question there. Yeah. But, and then, nothing really happened in the end. Like... I would have ended it with Kay is pregnant, injected herself, and is carrying now this like mutated creature inside her, and that leads the plants the seed literally for future movies with what she is now going to spawn off to humanity. Because then she gave birth to that thing where I thought the movie was over. This Voldemort looking beast pops out of her and kills her and then just dies like a few minutes later. Like it was a, a creepy and cool looking alien, but it, it ultimately amounted to nothing in that it just died. Or maybe it, maybe it isn't dead. That's the thing. Maybe it's just free floating in space and we'll see it again. But that's kind of a complaint that I had is that mm -hmm. I would have liked that if that alien, you, the plan is to keep it alive then, 
to have the alien kill everyone on the ship. And then he connects with Rook. He's like, all right, perfect. Now enter these coordinates and go to this settlement and then we'll do some damage kind of like, those are the alternate endings that I came up with like yeah. on the spot that I think overall are better. That's maybe I'm biased, but those are kind of my things is that didn't really lead to much in the end. It's a story that wrapped itself up in itself, which is okay. But in like mm-hmm. rebooting or giving us more information in between Alien 1 and Aliens, I would have liked to see like this lead to how the mother alien in Aliens got born. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of what I thought yeah. it was going to happen in the end. I thought that this movie yeah. would end with the alien mother be born. And I actually thought Kay was going to become that alien. So I know that was a lot there, but those are kind of my thoughts on where I think it could have been a bit better. You bring up a really good point, Eric. Um, this movie takes place right after the first Alien, so therefore, it's our, it, already it's going to struggle with its identity. Is it going to bridge Alien and Aliens, or is it going to be kind of like a side quest, irrelevant movie? And I use irrelevant, like, I mean, yeah. still fun to watch, but doesn't advance the story one bit. This was the latter. Didn't really, like, this movie doesn't need to be watched to, like, understand the whole chrono. Like, it... It doesn't bridge the gap is what I'm saying. It's its own little standalone movie. You don't even need to watch any Alien movie before watching this movie. You just go into it. Um, That is a complaint too, Eric, honestly. Like, the stakes are not... The stakes are high, but they're not like... There wasn't anything super, like, catastrophic at the end where it would have been like, oh, shit, like, it leads into this or it's going to lead into that. That would have been cool. I agree. I didn't even think of those alternate endings. Those are interesting, Eric. Um, I did like the showdown with Voldemort versus Rain because it was a tribute to like Ripley versus a xenomorph, right? And her her killing it just like Ripley does, you know, that was cool. Um, you mentioned the sequence with raising the temperature to the face huggers. I like the sequence when Rain was like zero gravitying through the acid blood. That was yeah. pretty cool. Um, there's cool sequences with like an elevator shaft. There's cool like gore moments this movie is very gory when it needs to be when the when it has gore it's all the way up to 11 you know it's like oh shit like the pregnancy scene and yeah yeah it didn't really care for a lot of the side characters honestly like you said very forgettable andy was good too though what i did predict i thought really i thought this was gonna happen i thought andy was gonna do like an ultimate sacrifice move and like Mm -hmm. save uh rain or another character at the end but that's not the way they chose to go that's fine. Um, yeah, I thought this movie was quick, like, very enjoyable. I wasn't bored ever. Um, thrilling. Not too. This movie's scope isn't that big. It's very, like, bring it back to its simplistic roots of Alien 1. This movie was a tribute to Alien 1, in my opinion. Like, Fede Alvarez, that's what he said. He loves mm-hmm. Alien 1. He's going to do a tribute to Ridley Scott's movie. And that's all it is. Very simple, in and out, done. I enjoyed my time with it. I do like Prometheus too, Eric, a lot actually on rewatches. I'd put it up there. That and Romulus would be a hard, that'd be a good debate for me, like which one I like more. Mm-hmm. One has a ton of story and one is just more like enjoyable and simplistic. Um, and with like Prometheus has way better actors and like, well, anyway, that's a different yeah. conversation. Yeah, I, I enjoyed Romulus a lot. I put it like, Honestly, when you review it at three and a half stars, that's what I would give it to, Eric. Because it wasn't like a masterpiece and it wasn't like, I had, I had a really fun time with it. So, yeah. yeah. It's funny because when I was like, that's a problem I have right now. Is like when I watch movies, I'm thinking like, okay, it's at four stars right now. I'm like, oh, four and a half. Oh, four. Like as yeah. the movie's yeah. going on, it's like, man, just enjoy the movie. Think about the rating after it. It ain't that deep. But I was thinking of that, and I was honestly at one point I was like, "Oh, this could be like a four and a half here," but then it, it did go down for me at point. Anyways, but then after the movie, I talked to Zach, and he was like, his reaction was, "I asked him, I'm like, oh, what'd you think?" He's like, "I didn't like it. <laughs> like, he was not mm. a fan at all." So then we just stayed in the parking lot and talked about it, and I like convinced myself, like, you know what, maybe I didn't like it that much either, like. But then I, I still stood firm on, like I told him I was going to give it four stars. Like, four stars? I couldn't believe it. So we're just going in a back and forth about it. And it's true. Like, when I, at the end of the day, there are a lot of things that I had a hard time overlooking that I couldn't give it that four. But um, 
overall, like it's, and I think that's a thing on Letterboxd. Like we have it in our mind, like three and a half isn't a good rating. Like it's still seven out of ten. Like that's still good, right? So yeah. Anyways, I like the horror vibe as well. To be honest, like that's what for me makes Alien better than Aliens. Is that I love that that but Aliens is still fantastic, but I, I love the yeah. the suspense, the just the build up, the scariness of it all, like. And I like that they played into that here. So again, I'm interested to see this one with subtitles. Maybe I can understand what the homeboy Bjorn is saying. Although he was not missed once he was clipped. No. Um, yeah, a lot of good gory scenes too. Like the kind of the it's whatever the hot light there that the girl was like rubbing on herself there to see through yeah. her. Like that the alien was inside. Like that was cool. Like an X-ray kind of. No, there were yeah. a lot of good sequences in there for sure. And um, do you, would you want to see a sequel with Rain and Andy? Because now that's the thing. That's the other thing now. It's like, that's why I thought she was going to die. Are yeah. we not unaware of these aliens in the in the universe out there? And she just kind of has this knowledge now. Like, she's a, a Ripley-style warrior that has killed uh, quite a few of them, honestly. So yeah. you'd think that she'd be in the mixer. Or she's just going to that paradise planet to chop it up with Thanos after he snapped half of humanity into the oblivion. Like, that's what that planet reminded me of. So, I don't know. Maybe she's just like, all right, I did my part. I'm done. Like, I just want to chill now. So, but would you want to see more with her? Actually, I'm I'm in your camp, Eric. I wouldn't want to see anything else with her. This this movie might have been had a higher rating if the ending was more clean and wrapped up better. Even like I enjoyed the Voldemort climax with rain, but like that's what's stopping me from giving it a higher rating. The ending isn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought it'd be a little more, maybe just done differently. I would have liked maybe a double kill, you know, like she did her, she destroyed the threat. She neutralized the threat, but she also like mortal mortally is wounded or something like a sacrifice. Um, I thought she'd be the last survivor, but then, like, you're right. The ending needs some work in this movie. I'm with yeah. you on this. I, I think they should close the door, though. No more no more sequels to this. You can explore the universe with other movies, but not... not uh, this story is done and closed, right? So, and maybe they'll give my us, thoughts. Maybe they'll give us Alien Remus up next, the prequel to this. But um, we'll see. See what happens. Yeah, I guess that's all I got on it for, for me as well. Overall, enjoyed it. Maybe wanted a bit more out of it based on the reviews I was seeing ahead of time, but good yeah. movie, I would say, overall. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I wouldn't have been mad if I missed it in the theater. Like, if I hadn't watched this right away, I wouldn't be upset. Like, it wasn't like, I have to go see this movie. It, it, it didn't have those vibes, but it was yeah. very enjoyable nonetheless. Yeah, agreed. Um. All right, so... You can get into some recommendations. I think unless you had anything else on the sci-fi genre that you wanted to share, that's kind of all I had. No, I think we've said plenty. Okay. No, I'm, I'm good. All right. Um, like I said, I've been get, I've been watching a lot of movies lately. I think I've mentioned most of them on here, though, because they have been all sci-fi. Yeah. Actually, one that didn't come up, Predator. Watch that for the first time. Awesome movie. Like yeah. Some of the effects dated for sure. But I can look past that, no problem. I thought the action was unreal. Them, that's a funny movie too. Like Arnold's one-liners were killing me, and I would love to see more like twenty twenty-four action movies that really lean into that. Like sometimes corny lines, like um, I forget one, but like he throws like an axe to someone, and then. The axe like pins them against the wall, and he's he says like, "Oh, now you're stuck or or stick right there or something like that." Like it's a stupid line, but it was kind of yeah. funny, and um, yeah. great action. Like the end was unreal too. The showdown with him and the predator, I loved. Carl Weathers, awesome. Yeah, like watch that movie on Disney Plus if you've never seen it, like me. But I think I'm gonna steer clear from the others. But I do want to watch Prey. I've heard that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. It is. I've seen yeah. The Predator, horrible movie. Like, that was the only one I had seen. Um, yeah. Olivia Munn, like, Sterling K. Brown. Ugh. Yeah. I, the, uh, I love the first Predator too, Eric. Like, I watched, Mackenzie had never seen it. We popped it on, like, last month. Loved it. Uh, I love the cheese aspect, and then it turned into, like, a one-on-one -on -one showdown with the Predator at the end. I love that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Uh, all the iconic lines, you know, like if it bleeds, we can kill it and mm. get to the chopper. Yeah, and yeah. Every Arnold line that people know but don't know where it's from. Um, 
all the characters too are iconic, you know, like Blaine and uh, I forget all their other names, but like the the scout guy and then JC, Jesse Ventura's character with the big machine gun. And one of the one of the soldiers is Shane Black, the director of say, The Predator, yeah. The Nice Guys. Uh, really a good director, actually. I'm glad he switched careers because he's a way better director than an actor. Yeah, is he the one um, who has all the jokes about like his girlfriend and stuff? It was him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First to die, I believe. First to die, I think. Yeah, wasn't um, missed. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. And definitely watch Prey. And maybe just that one. <laughs> okay, right on. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just recommend one thing, because I've been going through the movies I've watched, and I don't really need to talk about them. I mean, I've been doing a lot of rewatches. Anyways, the show I want to talk about is The Bear Season 3. Mm, okay. I finished it. How, where are you on in that show, just Still so I don't give any same spoilers? same spot. Episode 8. I've, like, I think the last one I watched okay. was the, the birth episode, like with the sugar. Okay. In the mall. I yep. hated that episode. I don't know if you liked it, man. I was oh. not a fan of that episode. I was actually a fan of that episode. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm a huge fan of the whole season, honestly. Super different though, and I appreciate what they tried. To me it was a it was a it was a hit what they tried doing with the yeah. different episodes. I like that aspect. Maybe not much to advance the story of the show along, but a lot of like backstory stuff mm-hmm. I found in this season. Um episode like the last two episodes were really good too eric in my opinion but uh, yeah if you aren't a fan of like more slower style episodes with just focusing on one character then this season might be a miss for you but to me like i just want to recommend it to everyone like it's gonna be it's definitely making my top 10 just spoil it spoil that right away it's gonna be in my top 10 somewhere because honestly i thoroughly enjoyed it i love the world i like carmine and like him doing the food and I love all that stuff, you know, like all the dialogue and the hecticness. I like the hecticness. Um, I was a fan of season three, Eric. That's all. Okay, I'm, gl- I'm glad to hear that. And I don't mind slow and character episodes at all. Like in season two, those are some of my favorite episodes, like the Marcus episode. The um, yeah. What else? There's another one, I think. I think With Richie. Yeah, Richie. Great. Uh, that's my fa- probably my favorite episode of the whole show, to be honest. I, yeah. I rewatch yeah. it. Love that episode. But, um, and I like the, um, I forget her name now, the, um, the woman in season, like. Uh, the old lady? Yeah. Tina? Tina. Yeah, her episode was good. Like, that was probably my that favorite really one good. of season three. I'll get back into it. Um, again, like, I like the world. I like the characters overall. I'm, I don't know if you're a Fack Brothers guy. Like, I can't stand them, to be honest. I think oh. they get way too much screen time, but I guess that's, I'm just nitpicking here. But anyway, I'll, fin- I'll definitely finish the show. Don't get me wrong. And I like, okay. I like it. I'm, opt- I'm going to tune in for season four for sure. So I'm not, I'm not out on the bear. It's just for me, it didn't. Like season two is such a peak for me that I, maybe mm. I wanted a bit more. Anyways. I'll get back into it. I hear you. I also have a show to recommend now. Again, it's early days, but I'm recommending it so that if you you want to follow all along as it drops every week, Bad Monkey season one on uh, oh. Apple TV. So okay, take again grain of salt here. First two episodes were not that great. There's only three episodes out, but episode okay. three. Like now, I'm more into it. There, there's like a murder mystery element involved. Vince Vaughn plays a. a like a kind of retired detective or like he's on probation basically living out in Miami and he's just working this case like that he's not supposed to be because he's not a detective anymore and then he just interacts with like all of a slew of strange and interesting characters you're wondering like is this a freak accident is this a murder there's an insurance fraud in there like to get some money um there's a monkey involved but Vince, it's just classic Vince Vaughn, really. Like, he's, I don't even think he's playing a character. He's just himself out there. But Vince Vaughn is naturally funny, charismatic. Yeah. So he's doing a good job at carrying. And now the element of intrigue is heating up. So would recommend that. Bad Monkey drops, I think, every Wednesday on Apple TV. Check it out. There's a few actors you'll recognize, like Braga from the Fast and Furious movies. You got Michelle yeah. Monaghan in there. A few others, but like those are kind of the ones off the top that I can um, identify. Like episode three ended on a nice cliffhanger that like I'm like, all right, let's see what we're what we're dealing with here. I'm inter- I'm interested now. 
Nice. You'll have to keep me posted every week so I uh, I can rip the show at the end of the year all in one shot. Yeah. Um, I did hear about this show because Vince Vaughn's Hot Ones, like mm. Chicken Wing Hot Sauce interview show on YouTube, I watched that one, which was one of the best I've ever seen, truthfully, because Vince Vaughn is a great human being. Nice. Uh, he talked about the show a little bit, and it got me like, oh, okay. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to check it out. You know, like kind of like a sleuth, like, uh, private detective vibe but like also in a cool setting they said miami right yeah, so exactly so i can't wait to watch that i will check it out unless like i'm gonna let you watch a couple more and tell me if it goes downhill or not like you do the dirty work but yeah, uh, sure. yeah good Can recommend yeah yeah that's kind of all i got uh, right now like again it's a, a lot of rewatches for me oldies that i've already talked about in this episode but that'd be it for me yeah yeah i don't have anything i want to discuss i just have just rewatched a bunch of stuff like Moneyball, great movie. Mm. Rewatch that. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm good. I'm okay, done. sounds good. So yeah, man. If any uh, this is a lot of fun, Matt. Love it. And dive into the genre really like a lot of it's. It was an open conversation. Like I had nothing prepped, and then we just we went on and uh, we're talking flubber one minute. Next thing you know, it's the children of the corn. Like you never know what you're gonna get on here. Sparks said yeah. core memories. I can still remember watching Flubber at uh, Tante Nicole's uh, house back in the day in Oncle Pat. But yeah, anyways, um, Matt, any, a lot of fun. Any final notes for the listeners? Yeah, thank you everybody for listening. Hope you enjoyed our sci-fi talk today and enjoyed our lists. Feel free to share us your list. If you want to do a top five, yeah. just DM me on, on Facebook. Let me know what your list is. I'm very curious. Uh, thanks for listening and hope you're having a great summer right now. Yeah, same here. Any, even though the topic has passed now, I'm not going to be watching any sci-fi movies anymore on Letterboxd. Like, I'm still interested to hear your lists and stuff. So yeah, thanks a lot everybody for listening. Stay tuned for episodes dropping every two Mondays. Continue to enjoy your summer. Love you all and yeah, peace.